Hello, everybody. Welcome to Jumping in an Elevator, the podcast where I, Mike, from the glorious YouTube channel Mike's Mike, I talk about the things you want to know more about. And today, you, you definitely want to know more about what I'm talking about because we're doing a main pop girl, Hunger Games. Those five words together might mean nothing to you now, but I can assure you they will mean something in a few minutes. Um, first off, special hello to Charlie. Thank you for being one of my top tier patrons. My wish for you today is that you're streaming the new Charlie XCX track. It is your namesake. You know, Charlies go both ways. I would say some Charlies that I've met are the absolute worst people in the world. But then the other Charlies are excellent. And I love Charlie XCX, even though her name is Charlotte. But the Charlies claim her. Also, Charlie D'Amelio, she's cool too. So that's two wins for the Charlies. The nasty guy that I knew during uni, he's a loss for the Charlies. So, you know, 2v1, Patreon Charlie, where are you going to sit? Are you in the good or the evil tier? I've spoken about this for too long. Um, a couple of updates before we get into this podcast episode. I'm recording this again on my streaming software. Last episode, I realized that my streaming camera has been reversed for a year. Sorry, what? I don't know why this didn't compute. That I was like looking at the streaming software and seeing my face every time I was streaming, but it never clicked that like my left was registering as my right and I just never put two and two together. Anyway, I reversed the camera and I hate it because now I look wrong. <laughs> I look wrong. So if you're used to seeing me the other way, I'm sorry about that. Um, next thing is I'm wearing a choker, kind of accidentally. I wanted to wear a necklace, but I think one of my necklaces gave me a rash. <laughs> this is a podcast episode, it's just chaos from the start. I think my main necklace was giving me a rash. So I was like, I'll try this one on. And it was too big to wrap once, so I wrapped it twice. And now it looks like a choker. But I think it's kind of a serve. But then I realized I look like the host from Total Drama Island. And I also look like season one, Dan's dad, Mr. Humphreys. What the hell is his name? Rufus. Oh, I look like a Rufus. Not even just Rufus from Gossip Girl. I look like a Rufus. I could be Rufus. Actually, I like the name Rufus. I could be a Rufus. Rufus? You know what I mean, okay? Um, what other updates do we have? I am updating my graphics. So like the intro to the main YouTube channel and maybe the podcast as well. So if you are someone that can do After Effects and um, Blender, cause I love the little like Chrome, like 3D, like splash, like chow vibes. Um, so if that's something that you are able to do, then feel free to email me and put your, like some examples of your work and your rate tar X. Next thing, uh, last episode of the podcast, I did a Met Gala seating arrangement, which was super fun, had a lot of fun with that. And I actually did part two and I uploaded it as a Patreon exclusive episode yesterday. So if you're a Patreon girly, go ahead and watch that. Um, if you would like to become a Patreon girly, there's always a link in the description. And also, if you're listening to this, there's a link in the episode description on Spotify or whatever. Um, so if you would like to become a Patreon girly and have access to that, I think there's maybe five, four or five bonus episodes up there. They're usually about 30 minutes long. Um, and also, again, sorry to keep talking about this, but... Just a general shout out. Thank you for being patrons because patron is like a reliable kind of source of income. Um, I am using the Patreon money to buy a new camera. So that's exciting. I'm saving up for like a really good camera. Um, so thank you. I will let you all know when the better camera comes through. Cool. All right. So for this episode, we are kind of piggybacking off what I did on the main channel in the most recent video in which I was talking about the Hunger Games catching fire 
and the title of the video was This is the Best Movie Ever, Argue with the Wall. And I think I was right in saying that it is the best movie ever. And if you disagree, you are wrong. That's not really like a thing that you can have an opinion on. It's just like maths. There's a right answer and a wrong answer. That's why I love maths and I love engineering. Because it's like, there's just an answer. And if you get it wrong, you got it wrong. Shut up and move on. Right? When you talk to someone who studies like law or philosophy or something, and they just, they just talk. They love to talk. And you know, if you get something right, that's great. But if you get something wrong, it's like, is it really wrong? Or could you talk yourself into a correct answer? I'm just talking absolute shit right now. Um, but in maths, you either get it right or you're dumb. And I love that energy. Because sometimes it's nice to be told that you need to get better at something because you got it incorrect. So that's fun. Um, yeah, it, and that's the correct opinion on that movie. It's the best movie ever. Suzanne Collins, I'd love to interview you on the podcast. Let me know, bestie. And the Hunger Games in general, big fan. I am an atrocious fan of the Hunger Games. I love the concept. I love the concept of a battle royale. Check my Twitch streams. I played Fortnite. And the concept of a battle royale, it's excellence because... You get all these people together and they have to fight each other and there's only one left. Everyone loves a competition. Humans thrive off competition. I myself, I love competition. When I can compete against other people, oof. There's a reason why I didn't play any team sports during high school and university. All the sports that I played were ones that I could do myself, such as tennis and running. Guys, this choke is making me feel claustrophobic. I'm claustrophobic, Darren. You think these producers going to pay my mortgage? I got money. Hi, Gemma Collins. Anyway, so, yeah, I love competition. And, you know, that even comes through in academics. Because don't you forget that I was runner-up ducks three years in a row to three different people? Mm. Mm Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was thinking about this the other day. I cannot think of a time when I've outright won something. (laughs) Like, I think I, I do well and succeed in a lot of things. <laughs> so true. Pat myself on the back. But I don't think I've outright won anything. <laughs> I'm trying to think of things now. Like, I came second in terms of academics in high school to three different people. That one hurt. And then it's like, how do you win YouTube? You can't really win YouTube because there'll always be someone better. So True. But I just want to win something. Maybe I'll just enter some little competition that I can win. Or like even art contests and that kind of shit when I was younger. Like I would enter it and do well, but I wouldn't win. When's my time to shine? You know? <sighs> anyway, so the concept of a Hunger Games is very excellent to me. And there's a generator on the internet that you can put anyone into and it will simulate a Hunger Games. And that's what we're doing today. Very, very excited to do this. Um, Here's a fun little story for you. In high school, my friend Jacob and I, Jacob of Italian Tour fame, I feel like so many of my stories involve him, like my high school stories, because we were just up to shit, you know? We were in maths class, the top maths class, of course, don't get it twisted. And we used to use the random number generator on the scientific calculator to simulate a Hunger Games of the entire like year group cohort. So let me just run you through this. What we would do, we would write down every single person in the year group on a piece of paper, and then we'd give them all a number. And then we'd like create the situation in the calculator. We give it the range and you randomly generate a number. And I think it was first number was who kills and the second number is who gets killed um and i think maybe we ended up introducing a third number that was like method but there was something on this calculator that you could take out numbers from the set so you could say like one to 200 and take out number 20 number 132 because they're already dead 
This was so morbid. But then we used to like do that and then we'd like write down who killed who and we would like make up the method and then it would come down to a winner. And surprisingly, we were always near the top. Again, never won because I famously never win anything. But I mean, what are the chances? We did this like five plus times and we always ended up being like in the top 20. And I think that's just so representative of us as people. Like we were just destined to place in the top 20. And that's why I'm releasing a mixtape. Are you getting whiplash from these segues? I hope you are. I'm planning on releasing a mixtape called The Mike's Tape at 500,000 subscribers. So I think we're at like 460,000. That's 40,000 people is a lot of people. It's going to take me fucking ages to get there, which is good because then I can make the EP, my little mixtape moment. Um, and yeah, so that's a little something that I'm working on as well. I was doing some, a live studio session on Twitch the other day. We were writing some bars for one of the songs, which I've called Five Star. Oh, it's great. It's fantastic. Very excited about this. Um, yeah, so keep an eye out for that. (laughs) Anyway, so we are going to generate this Hunger Games. And in terms of who's in this... I'll read you through the districts. So District 1, actually we might zoom in a little bit because we're a little bit crusty dusty here. So District 1, we've got Billie Eilish and Katy Perry. Now, when I was making these districts, there wasn't a whole lot of thought about why these people are in those districts. I just kind of went down the list and filled it out. But maybe something that we can do is work out why they're in the same district. This is like pop girls that had several weeks at the top of the charts. And I love that for them. District 2, Gaga and Dua Lipa. That makes sense. District 3, Beyonce and Charlie XCX. This one, I mm, mm -hmm. don't really know what happened there. District 4, Rina Sawayama and Grimes would love a collab from those two. A little District 4 collab. District 5, we have Luna and Twice. Had to put my girls in there. Um, also, I nearly put Stacy in there. Because Stacy is taking up a lot of space in my um, in the cranium. And maybe they're going to knock one of those two off. Luna or Twice is going to be replaced by Stacy. Huge. District 6, we have Ariana and Britney Spears. I love that district. District 7, we have Cardi B and Taylor Swift. I did that because I thought that could be an interesting dynamic. You know, just something like a little bit fun. Maybe they'll make a song while they're running around the forest, etc. District 8, Kim Kardashian and Kim Petras. This is because everyone in District 8, their first name is Kim. District 9, FKA Twigs and Fergie. I saw a TikTok of FKA Twigs talking about how people call her FKA like what people get it together Fergie I'm not referring to the royal I'm referring to the duchess and when I say the duchess I don't mean the duchess I mean the duchess of Black Eyed Peas fame um, who was famously up in the gym working on her fitness and we are her witness District 10 we have Nicki Minaj and Doja Cat I was on Twitter today and Nikki was in a Twitter space, which is like an audio group, essentially. And she was just in there talking about shit. It was really cool. So that was fun. And District 11, we have Florence and Megan. Florence Welch and Megan the Stallion. I was going to put Florence and like the machine as another entity in District 11. But then I thought, no. Similarly for District 12, we have Marina and Ava Max. I was going to put Marina and the Diamonds, but I replaced the Diamonds with Ava Max. Ava Max, I feel like every day I fight for Ava Max. And I feel like she's a lot bigger in Europe than she is in the States. Because when I look at the charts for Europe, which is something that I do, yes, I love to look at charts. And she consistently does well on European charts, but then it's beyond crickets in the United States. But then how many times do I have to mention how Little Mix has never been given their dues on the charts in the States? 
but they consistently do well in the UK charts and the Europe charts. It's a thing for another time. So what happens is you just click proceed. So let's see what happens here. Also, I had put pictures for all of these people, which took me so long. I don't want to undersell how long this took. I was truly fighting for my life. It took me about half an hour to put all the pictures in. And then it was like invalid, invalid image source. I screamed. Truly, I screamed. And then I went and had a tortina. If you don't know what a tortina is, I feel sorry for you. So, here we go. First stage of our Hunger Games with the Pop Girls is called the Bloodbath. As the tributes stand on their podiums, the horn sounds. Florence snatches a bottle of alcohol and a rag. Rena runs away from the cornucopia. See, Rena is a smart girl, so I expected this to happen. Billy runs away with a lighter and some rope. Ooh, she's going to film a new music video. Beyonce runs away. Ariana runs away. Cardi, Megan, Taylor, they all run away. Ooh, here we go. <laughs> FKA Twigs shoots a poisonous blow dart into Gaga's neck, slowly killing her. That's T. And you know, controversially, I can kind of believe it. Well, isn't that crazy? Doja stays at the cornucopia for resources. Charlie takes a handful of throwing knives. <gasps> Props. Props for the Good Ones music video. Brittany runs away. Fergie overpowers Nikki, killing her. What? Why am I generally upset about that? <laughs> They have a song together. Isn't it called, like, You Already Know? And they just threw that away in an instant. Fergie said, I'm not fucking around. I am not fucking around in the Pop Girls Hunger Games. So we've already lost Gaga and Nikki. This is sick. Dua retrieves a trident from inside the cornucopia. Ava Max grabs a shield leaning on the cornucopia. Marina and Kim K run away. Twice runs away with a lighter and some rope. Mm hmm I know that's right. Luna finds a bag full of explosives. Katy Perry also finds a bag full of explosives. And Kim Petras runs away while Grimes finds a backpack full of camping equipment. And I think Grimes knows how to camp. Grimes is camp. And she knows how to camp. And I think that is potentially too much power for one person. Something to consider. Okay, day one. It's about to get explosive, everyone. Hold on to your horses. Or your cowboys, because famously, as Slater tweeted, save a horse, ride a cowboy. The more days I spend in lockdown, the more I lose track of what I'm talking about. So sorry if I'm jumping around. Doja overhears Britney and Kim Kardashian talking in the distance. Collab of the century, maybe. Florence is pricked by thorns while picking berries. I don't actually love that for her because I kind of get the vibes that she would be one with nature so she would know which berries to eat. So I think she would see the poison berries and not go for them. She went for the proper berries, but then she got pricked by the thorns. And isn't that just so indicative of society and the patriarchy? Rena fishes. So true. Twigs receives an explosive from an unknown sponsor. Who do we think Twigs' explosive is from? She just knocked out Gaga. So I guess we've got to think of someone who would want Gaga gone. Madonna. Madonna sent FKA Twigs the explosive. Charlie, Cardi, and Beyonce hunt for other tributes. I love this for Charlie, right? This is going to help her sell albums. Charlie, Cardi, and Beyonce hunt for other tributes. Exactly. Fergie picks flowers. Girl, now is not the time. Kim, especially after she just killed Nikki. Like, I have no sympathy for you. Kim Petrus steals from Billy while she isn't looking. <gasps> the girls are fighting. Grimes overhears Katie and Megan talking in the distance. Similarly to how Doja overheard Brittany and Kim K. Katy Perry and Megan the Stallion, I feel like they would make a hit. One of my favourite things about TikTok is how every few months they pick a Katy Perry song and it has a renaissance. They're like, wait, Bon Appetit was actually a fun song. Wait, um, 365 was actually a fun song. 
And I'm like, where have you been? Where the hell have you been, Loka? Like, oof. The speed with which TikTok cancels and then, like, elevates and then cancels and then elevates artists, it's just, it's too stressful. Ava Max runs away from Luna. Now, remember, when I say Luna or twice, I mean the entire group. So, Ava Max running away from Luna, I think that's probably the right decision. Marina diverts Twice's attention and runs away. How would you divert Twice's attention? Sound off in the comments below. Taylor and Ariana split up to search for resources. That is a fucking powerhouse duo. I feel like they're going to make it very far. Dua travels to higher ground. There's a restaurant in Melbourne called Higher Ground. That's where she went. Fallen Tributes. Two cannon shots can be heard in the distance. Gaga from District 2 and Nikki from District 10. It's a tough day. Day one was hard for us. Proceed. Night one. Ariana tends to her wounds. Billy receives an explosive from an unknown sponsor. Who's sending Billy explosives? Phineas. Grimes sees a fire but stays hidden. Mm-hmm. 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 Grimes, like, she's so well equipped for this. Don't forget, she made the song Kill vs. Mame. So she knows what she's doing. Kim K looks at the night sky. Fergie fends twice Beyonce and twigs away from her fire. That's a lot of work. She fends t- the entirety of twice Beyonce and twigs away from the fire. Kim Petrus stabs Katy Perry in the back with a trident. Oof. Like, I don't want to see anyone die, but like, damn. Dua cooks her food before putting her fire out. Hopefully she cooked it enough so she doesn't get food poisoning. Marina is unable to start a fire and sleeps without warmth. Oh. Mm. All right. Luna and Charlie run into each other and decide to truce for the night. Charlie is slaying this. Luna and Charlie run into each other and decide to truce for the night. Luna feet Charlie, like Luna feet Grimes. Whoa. Cardi sets up camp for the night. Megan and Doja huddle for warmth. Mm-hmm. 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 The rap princesses. Brittany and Florence sleep in shifts. Rena passes out from exhaustion. Girl, no. <laughs> Taylor dies from an infection. And Ava Max falls into a pit and dies? I just got chills. They just fucking sprung that on me. Rena passes out from exhaustion. Taylor dies from an infection and Ava Max falls into a pit and dies. Our girls are really fighting for their lives out there. Oh, nobody's safe. I thought Taylor would be safe, but no. Day two. Brittany receives clean water from an unknown sponsor. Who do we think sent Brittany clean water? I actually think it was Iggy Azalea. And that has layers. Beyonce tends to Doja's wounds. So true. Marina questions her sanity. And then she releases an EP. Cardi begs for Megan to kill her. She refuses, keeping Cardi alive. That's WAP energy. Um, WAP is going to feature very highly in my Spotify Wrapped for this year. And it featured highly in my Spotify Wrapped for last year. And I don't know what that says about me. Fergie searches for firewood. (gasps) Dua shoots an arrow at Grimes, but misses and kills Kim Petrus instead. Whoa, I had to pause, because that is such a loaded sentence. Dua shoots an arrow at Grimes, but misses and kills Kim Petrus instead. Oh, this is another explosive sentence. Twice defeats Luna in a fight, but spares her life. (gasps) Twice defeats Luna in a fight. So I'm imagining like a a war situation, side A, side B, and they're just going at it. Because it's like a group. They're two groups fighting each other. They fight, but then twice is like winning and spares the lives of Luna. This is explosive. Does that mean they're like friends now? Florence decapitates Charlie with a sword. I looked away for three seconds. 
and suddenly someone's been decapitated. It's giving Noel Khan. And Florence, girl, I thought you were chill. Decapitates Charlie. All my faves are dying. Who's even left? Twigs camouflages herself in the bushes. That kind of makes sense. She is a twig, after all. A stick. Billy chases Rena. Billy, mind your business. Ariana collects fruit from a tree. Fallen tributes day two. Five cannon shots can be heard in the distance. Katie from District 1. Taylor from District 7. Ava Max from District 12. Kim Petras from District 8. And Charlie from District 3. Rena and Fergie sleep in shifts. Now don't forget this is the night of day two. Grimes begs for Ariana to kill her. She reluctantly obliges killing Grimes. Everyone, pray for my monetization. I've said kill so many times. Twigs, Doja, and Billy cheerfully sing songs together. Now is not the time, girls. Twice questions their sanity. That makes sense. Dua receives fresh food from an unknown sponsor. Okay, let's think. Who's sending Dua food? I think it's Bella Hadid. Because Dua is dating Anwar, who is Bella's brother. That's such like an explosive family, if you think about it. Like Anwar is with Dua, Gigi is with Zayn, and Bella was with The Weeknd. I don't know who she's with now, uh, but yeah, star power. Marina lets Megan into her shelter. Luna tends to Beyonce's wounds. Brittany defeats Florence in a fight, but spares her life. Whoa, they want a collab, I reckon. Kim Pe Kim ooh, Kim K cries herself to sleep, and Cardi is awoken by nightmares. So who have we lost here? We've just lost Grimes because she begged Ariana to kill her, and Ariana said, "I won't." Just kidding, I will, and she does. And you would too for a check. Day three. Ariana sprains her ankle while running away from Brittany. That's kind of tea because Ariana killed Grimes and now Brittany's like after Ariana and Ariana sprains her ankle. Florence, Fergie and Rena hunt for other tributes. That's like a, a girl boss crew. Marina camouflages herself in the bushes. Dua is unable to convince Doja to not kill her. <gasps> So Doja kills Dua Lipa? I was waiting for a collab. Damn. Twice tries to sleep through the entire day. <laughs> so Twice was just like questioning their sanity, right? And then they're trying to sleep the entire day. Megan sees smoke rising in the distance, but decides not to investigate. She said, I'm not trying to catch that smoke. Luna scares Kim K off. Beyonce, Cardi, and Billy hunt for other tributes. Twigs bleeds out due to untreated injuries. I'm sorry, but it's funny. Let's get like a summary of who... Ooh, <gasps> arena event. Wolf mutts are let loose in the arena. Megan survives. Rena survives. As Ariana and Brittany fight, a pack of wolf mutts show up and kill them both? <gasps> That is so explosive. So Brittany was chasing Ariana. Ariana had just killed Grimes and she sprained her ankle and they were fighting. A pack of wolf mutts show up and kill them both. Twice survives. Cardi survives. Beyonce survives. Doja pushes Luna into a pack of wolf mutts. She pushes the whole crew. Damn, Doja's, wait, no, Doja, cause Doja's already dead, right? Yeah, cause Doja killed her. Wait, Doja's on a killing spree. An enemy is legendary. Doja pushes Luna into a pack of wolf mutts. Kim K is crushed by a pack of wolf mutts. Makes sense. Billy survives. Fergie survives. Marina knocks Florence out and leaves her for the wolf mutts. Marina's a savage. Not classy, not bougie, but ratchet. Let's continue. Fallen tributes. So many people passed away today. Eight cannon shots. Grimes from District 4. 
Dua from District 2, Twigs, Ariana, Brittany, Luna, Kim K and Florence. Let's do a status check-in. Billy from District 1 is alive. Beyonce from District 3 is alive. Rena's alive from District 4. District 5 twice is alive. District 7 Cardi's alive. District 9 Fergie's alive. Doge is alive from 10. Megan's alive from 11. Marina's alive from 12. Who am I going for? I think I want Marina to win. I don't want to jinx my girl though. Doja, I think, has the most kills. Yeah, she's killed two people. <sighs> okay, let's continue. Night three. Beyonce and Megan talk about the tribute still alive. Savage remix. Marina cries herself to sleep, as she should after her previous performance. Fergie and Twice run into each other and decide to truce for the night. We love an alliance. Doja tends to her wounds. Billy receives medical supplies from an unknown sponsor. Gurley has a lot of sponsors. It's giving Hunger Games industry plant. Cardi shoots an arrow into Rena's head. <gasps> no. Cardi shoots an arrow into Rena's head. I told you, the curse is real. The feast. The cornucopia is replenished with food supplies, weapons, and memoirs from the Tribute's families. Fergie takes a staff leaning against the cornucopia. Doja decides not to go to the feast. Smart. Twice also, does it, also decides to not go to the feast. Marina gathers as much food into a bag as she can before fleeing. Beyonce bashes Megan's head in with a mace. And Billy snaps Cardi's neck? Things went from zero to 100. Beyonce bashes Megan's head in with a mace. She said Savage Remix no more. She took Megan off the track. And Billy snaps Cardi's neck? Billy, calm down. Calm down, calm down. Twice repeatedly stabs Billy to death with a s with a what? S A I S. What's that? Fergie scares Doja off. Marina goes hunting. Beyonce travels to higher ground. I am. I have chills right now. Four cannon shots. Rena, Megan, Cardi, and Billy. There's not many pop girls left. We have Beyonce from District Three, Twice from District Five, Fergie from District Nine, Doja from District Ten, and Marina from District Twelve. Who do I want to win? I want twice to win. Let's keep going. Fergie receives clean water from an unknown sponsor. Who sent it? Will I am sent it. Marina stays awake all night. Doja sees a fire but stays hidden. Beyonce tries to treat her infection. Twice questions her sanity. Okay, so no one dies. These are the big leagues. Doja receives an explosive from an unknown sponsor. Who sent it? Hmm. Lunch Money Lewis. Marina shoots an arrow at Fergie, but misses and kills twice instead. With the one arrow? Come on, Katniss. The Katniss print. Beyonce accidentally steps on a landmine. <gasps> Wait. Doja receives an explosive and then Beyonce accidentally steps on a landmine. If you put two and two together, it's almost like Doja planned that. We lost twice in Beyonce. I think there's three left. Night five. Marina defeats Fergie in a fight that spares her life. Doja tries to sing herself to sleep. So we have Marina, Fergie and Doja left. I'm not going to say who my favorite is because every time who, when I say it, they pass away immediately. Day six, Fergie collects fruit from a tree, as she should. Marina runs away from Doja. No cannon shots can be heard in the distance. I'm stressed, guys. Doja loses sight of where she is. This is night six. Fergie falls into a frozen lake and drowns. Marina accidentally steps on a landmine. Does that mean Doja wins? The winner is Doja from District 10. I don't know how I feel about that. 
maybe they'll give us like a summary of how many kills. Because I know Doja was putting in work. District 10, two kills. Marina, second place, two kills. Fergie, third place, one kill. So this is the order from first eliminated to winner. Gaga, Nikki, Katie, Taylor, Ava Max, Kim Petras, Charlie, Grimes, Dua, Twigs, Ariana, Brittany, Luna, Kim K, Florence, Rena, Megan, Cardi, Billy, Twice, Beyonce, Fergie, Marina, and Doja Cat. <sighs> that was explosive. How did Nikki die again? Fergie killed Nikki. And she was wrong for that. And she fell into the frozen lake. So Fergie killed Nikki thought she was all that and then she fell into a lake and drowned and so much went down at the arena with the wolf mutts because ariana and britney were fighting and the wolf mutts showed up and killed them both doja pushed luna into the pack of wolf mutts kim kardashian was crushed and marina knocked florence out and left her for the wolf mutts it all went down on that day that was a lot that was a lot you guys that was a lot um also, before I forget, if you want to simulate your own Hunger Games, I need to take this choker off. I'm starting to get <sighs> breathy. Um, this website is called brantsteel.net forward slash Hunger Games. If you just type in Hunger Games Simulator, it should come up. So there's that. Um, something that I wanted to talk about at the start of the episode, but I forgot, lol, was Dawn of Chromatica. So let's talk about that now. Um, so this week we had the Chromatica Remix album come out and this was my Super Bowl this was my Super Bowl because I love Lady Gaga I love Charlie XCX Rina Sawayama Brie Runway Dorian Electra, A.G. Cook Shy Girl Blackpink Pablo Vittar like so many artists that I love are on this album and it was so good it was so good I was skeptical because when we had Club Future Nostalgia when that came out everyone was just running for the hills they were screaming and crying and throwing up when that came out because they hated it so much personally I liked it but I was stressing when I saw this I was like people are going to hate it because they don't know what to expect Um, but I loved it of course There's people on TikTok saying this is the worst album ever, but, you know, in order to have taste, there needs to be people who are tasteless that you can measure yourself against. Think about it. My favourite songs on the album, I would say, are Charlie and AJ Cook's remix of 911, the Sour Candy remix, Dorian Electra's remix of Replay was so good. Actually, Sign From Above... I'm sorry, but like, if my ass is going to shake to a song, it's going to shake to a song. And it was shaking to that song. Hyperpop, Elton John, yeah. And then, of course, House Lads Babylon and Babylon with Brie Runway. Brie Runway's verse, so good. Which is like, Brie, Brie, Brie. Yeah, exactly. Um, I went to buy the vinyl and... It was, a, it was letting me, which is huge because I was fighting for my life when I was trying to get the Chromatica limited edition vinyl. But this one was available. And I was like, that seems too good to be true because it is. And it said it ships on March 2022. In March 2022. And I'm sorry, no. Because I don't even know where I'm going to be living. My lease expires in January. I could be somewhere completely different and I'm getting a Lady Gaga vinyl shipped here and it won't even be here. Can you imagine? Some crusty would get the Dawn of Chromatica limited edition vinyl. Ugh, is there anything? If there's something worse than me losing, it's seeing someone I don't like winning. <laughs> Not that the person that lives here after me, I don't like them. Wait, maybe I won't though. That's the thing. I don't know. I don't want to gift them. I don't want to give them gifts. They're not getting the free Chromatica um, vinyl. They need to forget about it. So, yeah. Compared to Chromatica, I think, obviously, the Chromatica album is better than the Remix album. But the Remix album is fun. Um, 
do I have any other thoughts on it? I like the visuals, the green. I love like a toxic green. Stream toxic peaked at number nine in March 2004. If that's true, I'm gonna scream. And I know I can check that easily because I recently screenshotted a screenshot about this. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Great, so I deleted it. I'm so smart like that. Um, but I'm pretty sure it peaked at number four in 2004. No, what am I saying? Peaked at number nine in 2004, sorry. Sorry, everybody. I just opened my phone bombarded by notifications. Some of which I need to respond to and now it's stressing me out that I have to respond to these. But the thing is, my name isn't Alice, but I'm gonna keep looking for Wonderland. One last story before I finish this episode. <sighs> I got a pizza last night. For context, I am Italian, famously. And you know, I have relatives who own Italian restaurants. I know my way around a pizza. I've been to Italy twice. Disasters have happened both times. First time was the school trip where I bought the Carreras. Second time was when I got explosive food poisoning and it forever changed my diet. So nothing good ever happens in Rome. As the Romans said, Julius Caesar quoted that. Julius Caesar cursed me. Julius Caesar cursed me. Julius Caesar gave me food poisoning when I was in Rome. And he also has ruined my life with his little calendar antics. I'm just so fucking sick of Julius Caesar. Ugh. Absolute. Anyway. So, in my opinion, an Italian pizza has like a thin base, right? Thin base, wood fire, and in terms of ingredients, in my head, there's two very distinct types of pizza. Like there's the one that has like a shitload of shit on it. And then there's like the one that has less on it. And the Italian ones that I know of tend to be the second one. They still have stuff on there, but it's not like just in your face. Um, for example, one of my favorite pizzas in Melbourne is from Doc, uh, D-O-C. And they have this pizza, I think it's called the it's called The Dog, and it's like a margarita, but it's the next level. I'm on the next level, yeah. Can't wait for the new Aesper song, or Aesper. Every time I say it, someone gets mad. Um, but yeah, and it's like, it's quite expensive. It's like $30 for this pizza, but it's so fucking good. It's so fucking good. Buffalo mozzarella, glorious basil, absolutely glorious tomato sauce, and it's wood-fired. They know what they're doing. And when you go in there, they're speaking Italian. That makes me feel safe because I know this food's going to be good right so that's my usual pizza place but it's not close and I do not have a car and I don't have a bike yet but I will be in my bike era soon we shall see um, but if I was to go to this place I would have to catch a tram or walk famously not catching trams right now because we are in pandemic era and I feel like the tram is where people go to cough these days they just get on there and start fucking coughing. And I'm like, absolutely not. I haven't caught a tram in months. So I'd have to walk there. Now, when I had the idea to have the pizza, it was already 6 p.m. The sun sets at like 2 p.m. here. So I was already fighting for my life, trying to think about this pizza. I wasn't gonna walk at night. Scary. I'm just but a person. Walking at night? They're gonna beat me up for my Spotify stats. They're gonna beat me up for my phone and they're gonna get me to log in and they're gonna transfer all the data to their profile because they know I have the best Spotify wrapped in the world. And you have to think about these things when you're walking alone at night. Um, so I couldn't go to that pizza place. So then there's three pizza places. That's, that's actually four pizza places, everyone keep up. That's number one. Number two, still a decent walk away, like an achievable walk, but it's like if I'm walking to place number two, Place number one is five more minutes from place number two. So it's like, if I'm walking from my apartment to pizza two, I may as well walk to pizza one, but pizza one is too far. So that's the issue. 
in Pizza 2, she's not doing what she needed to do recently. She used to be good, but she kind of dropped the ball. Pizza 3. Pizza 3 is close, like walking distance, comfortable walking distance, can have a conversation with my mum in that amount of time. Um, and I had Pizza 3 in the back of my mind. But see, on this particular day, I decided Pizza 4. Because Pizza 4 was giving me that Italian family business vibe. And I absolutely love to support a local business and a local Italian-owned pizza shop. Absolutely. Right up my alley. But I've always been intimidated to go in there. For some reason, I don't know what it is. I think it's like imposter syndrome. It also gave me slight mafia vibes. But people say that I also give mafia vibes. So something to think about. So I was going to go to Pizza 3, walk to Pizza 3, then looked at the menu and suddenly it was just not making any sense to me. This was just not the pizza vibes that I was requesting. So I said, today's the day. I'm going to fight my fears and I'm going to go to Pizza 4. I go to Pizza 4. I buy the biggest fucking pizza possible because I was hungry. And also I love to... I'm a subscriber to the idea of having pizza as leftovers. So I'll get a big pizza and then I'll have the rest for lunch or dinner the next day. Cold pizza, yeah. So I order the pizza. I get the pizza. I open the box. Shock. Because it looked like an Australian pizza. Screaming and crying. I was screaming and crying. It had a thick base. There was so much meat on it. The ham was like Domino's ham. Don't, I'm going to throw up. It's wrong. It was wrong. But there was so much meat that I got sweaty. Do you ever get meat sweats? Like, I don't eat meat that often. Like, I eat meat, but I don't, like... Whoa! I love meat. I'm going to go eat so much meat right now. And I was just overwhelmed by the meat on this pizza... And I got the meat sweats and I felt sick. So there we go. Moral of the story is next time I want pizza, I'm going to walk the distance, risk my life and my premium Spotify account to get the good pizza. But what is life if not taking risks? Think about it. Cool. Okay. That brings me to the end of this episode. If you enjoyed it, feel free to leave a like. If you're watching on YouTube and you've got something to say, feel free to leave me a comment. If you'd like to become a Patreon girly, there's a link in the description. And yeah, thank you all for listening. And I will talk to you all soon. Peace out. Bye.